A number of years ago, I saw firsthand a young green marine turtle die a slow and painful death over three days. When we looked into the cause, we found the turtle had starved to death with over 30 different types of plastic blocking its digestive system. This was the beginning of my journey to find a solution to plastics escaping into our rivers and oceans, working with communities to empower them with knowledge, innovate with new ideas and designs, and create with tools and equipment. Plastic Collective's circular economy model involves three components, collectors, transformers, and creators. Petroleum-based plastics, which at the moment is most of them, um, take a long time to break down in our oceans and in our waterways. Plastic bottles take around about 450 years to break down. Fishing lines, which is one of the longest lasting ones, takes about 600 years. Plastic bags take up to 20 years, which in the meantime, one animal after the other can consume that and die from it, and it will still go on to another animal. Yeah, the environmental impacts of plastic in our waterways is devastating as when materials go in, half of it will sink, but after some time, over 96% of plastic sinks and that impacts animals, coral reefs, all the habitats. The impacts of plastics going into the ocean on coral reefs, for example, is that it carries pathogens which can cause coral cancer that can wipe out entire reefs. It impacts wildlife, they ingest it and they die from slow starvation. As well as that, it also entangles and destroys habitats. The annual global plastic consumption is 380 million tonnes. 10% 10 of this material is recycled, 10% is incinerated and 80% is mismanaged. So the way that plastics impact on communities where it's mismanaged is um, devastating health effects, burning, air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. It impacts every level of their livelihood. The impacts of burning plastic is it's not only releasing greenhouse gases, but it's also releasing toxins. Um, air pollution creates you know, bad respiratory diseases. The world in data graphs is really interesting because it compares GDP, gross domestic product per person, with plastic consumption. So you can look at the countries that are doing really well, that are you know, quite poor, they're doing really well, and others that are quite poor and not doing well. And the same inverse thing as richer countries doing very poorly, richer countries doing really well. So if we have a look at that, that's a lot of good information. The biggest issue for remote communities in dealing with waste plastic is a transportation cost, number one, um, and lack of infrastructure and low wages. Pretty much most of them have 100% leakage, so they either throw it into the river, into a ravine, into the ocean, bury it in the sand, or burn it in their backyards. The original Schroeder, which is a small mobile recycling machine, is a combination of two machines. It's a shredder, extruder, hence the name Schroeder. So the shredder shreds material into small flakes that gets collected. The flakes go into a hopper, which is an extrusion barrel. It melts it, remolds it, and that can be made into different products. So the way Plastic Collective has grown over the last five years, the first two years I was building machines with my engineers, second two years was delivering pilot programs. During this period, we had a, a total of five people that were working, not really being paid, you know, but all believed in the vision. Um, in the last year, we've, gone, we've grown from five unpaid people to 18 employed people all around the world. So we have offices now in Australia, USA, UK and Thailand. Earlier this year, um, our business grew quite considerably from a CRCP grant from the federal government. Um, that was a $2.5 million grant that enabled us to research and develop what we call the Schroeder Recycling Station, which is the next, next step up from the Schroeder. This is an equipment hardware stack with four pieces of equipment, integrated software designs with compliance and provenance, as well as teaching and training education packages.
Plastic Collective has sort of split into two components which are very closely related. The first component is delivering um, Schroeder recycling stations. The second component is consulting with um, companies. So it could be consulting with corporations, big corporations, companies designing products and helping them go through extended producer responsibilities and engaging them in a, the bigger system. So the funding from the consulting business is helping fund the project side of things. And the key message is for students that they're in a position now to empower other people. They do have a lot of knowledge about plastics, about waste um, and about the world as it is. So they need to take that knowledge and share it with their family, share it with their friends and just show them how that we can become a waste-free world.